welcome back to another colorful keto with Dory. So we're doing something awesome today and we're going to chat about bucket lists. Do you have one? Should you have one? We're going to meet a new friend from TikTok today in, in case you guys forget how awesome TikTok is and also in case you think there's only kids there like look at how many friends I've been meeting from there I'm just saying like why aren't you on there with me what is up with that <laughs> okay let's go live I'm so excited I love meeting new friends and TikTok people to boot like hello how awesome is the TikTok Oh, I hear you. Yay. Hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you didn't lie. You have disco lights. I you do. I so wasn't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're slightly distracting, but I love them. I love it. Love they it. were, they were an accident. So one time I decided I was going to do like a karaoke disco night recipe and everybody was like, oh my God, Dory, it's not your kitchen without the lights. So I want to say like somewhere around January of 2017 is when it became a thing. So I'm never live in my kitchen without the lights. And if I forget them, people are like, oh my God, are you sick? Are you feeling okay? <laughs> I don't, you don't look sparkly. <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself? I'm so excited to meet you. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my name is Lisa. I'm from Toronto, Canada. And I just published my first book. So pumped about it. Maybe over caffeinated. But, um, yeah, it's all about getting out of your comfort zone and uh, living with no regrets and a lot of people have so much trouble with that because they think they have all the time in the world and I'm trying to get people out of that a little more of a sense of urgency I guess uh, to really um, live the life they've always wanted well and to be present Right. I mean, if you're just living yes. your life to get through every day to the next day and you're never really enjoying those moments, because one day when your kids are older, when work is less stressful, you know what, when things are in place, then there'll be time for you. Then you can have some fun. Then you can live a little. But then what happens when we wake up and we're 80 and we never did any of those things? Absolutely. So many people just say, oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I'll do it later. But if their car breaks down, uh, they magically have time and money to have that fixed. But what about that trip they've always wanted to go on? Or if they've always wanted to go skydiving or go on a cruise or a boat or whatever, they, they somehow that's secondary to all of the negative stuff. Do you and know what? I want people to remember that you don't have, you don't have to. I, I realized something one time and it was anything that you don't do, it's for an excuse because anything you really want to do, it doesn't matter how unreasonable, how unrealistic, how crazy it seems. If you really want to do it, you'll figure out a way to do it. And I have seen that in action in my own life. Once I'm focused on something and I've decided I'm going to do it and I let go of the reasons why I can't do it, then guess what? It happens, even if it, it literally doesn't make sense. And I think to myself, there's no way I can pull that off, then I won't. And as soon as I think to myself, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I am, I'm gonna do it, I figure out a way. Yeah, everything, uh, to quote Marie Forleo, everything is figure outable. And you just really need to put your mind to it. I, for instance, what I'm working on right now on my bucket list is to sing the national anthem at a major league sporting event. That's so a good I'm one. I'm in singing lessons right now. And when I. I'm so I'm developing a skill that I need to achieve this goal. Okay. You can't just walk into a goal unless you're going to go skydiving. It's not, it's not something you can just do. 
So in my okay. case, I need to develop a skill. So I am developing the skill. It's like if you want to go to a country where you don't speak the language and you want to learn the language, it takes time. But yes. you need to make time for it. Yes. Well, and it's a choice, right? You can go to a foreign country and not speak the language and go for a vacation and be just fine. But if you want to go there and you want to speak the language, it might take you six months or a year to be comfortable, to be fluent, to, you know, feel like you achieved that goal. So let's talk a little bit about that. What are some goals that we can achieve right away? And what are some things that are really good goals to work towards? I always think that, like, language, because it does take time, when I was learning Spanish, I, I had four months before I went on my trip to Peru. So okay. my goal was to be able to order food in Spanish. Okay. So I made a really specific goal, because I wanted to be able to feed myself. Yes. And not just <laughs> point at random pictures and hope I know what I'm eating. Uh, or to say, yes, I want more, or no more. Uh, so that was my goal. Okay. Because I was on a guided tour, I knew I wouldn't need a lot of a lot more than that. But okay. I knew food, I was on my own. So language is always a good one. But like my book is called the New Bucket List. Okay. Which is also things that are not on your bucket list. Ooh. Okay. So Let's talk a little bit about God that. Was not a skydiving wasn't on my bucket list. The opportunity came up. I said yes. And I jumped out of the plane. Perfectly good plane. <laughs> so, actually, Nobody perfect. jumps out of a perfectly good plane. If it's not on fire and it's not broken, <laughs> you're not <laughs> supposed to jump out of that. Like, and, they, I've, and they pay people to let them do it. It's crazy. I've been uh, invited and I told my friends I would go, but you're going to have to push me. Because I'm not, like, voluntarily leaving it. Somebody's going to have to be like, oh, look over there. Poof. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Uh, my whole experience was very memorable. But you know what? I'm so glad I did it. And in that case, if somebody invites you to go do something that you you might not be interested in, it may not be on your bucket list, but it's still a new experience. Yes. Um, I had this last year. I'd never been skiing before. I know. Worst Canadian ever. I know. And I... Uh, my friend said, you know, I've been skiing this year. Do you want to go? I'm like, well, my bracelet says I have to say yes. So, yes. And I loved skiing. And then I was super mad. I hadn't done it sooner. Right. So, I want people to really take note of those opportunities where it may not have been something to even cross their mind. But they may actually love it. Well, and sometimes they say that the road or the path that you didn't intend to take leads to the most beautiful places, and I believe that with my heart and soul. When I found keto, I never intended to. It wasn't my intention. I found no by accident, and it just overtook my life with a passion that I can't explain. And when you find your thing, and it doesn't matter what your thing is, it you'll figure out a way. Like... I didn't know technology, zero, none. I wanted to start a page. I Googled it. I figured it out. And my whole life I spent saying, I don't know enough about that to do that. I, I don't understand enough about that. You know what? I would work out, but I don't know how to do it right, so I'd be wasting my time. Did I invest time in figuring out how to work out? No, because guess what? I don't actually want to do that. But when I wanted to start a page, I wanted to start a Facebook group, I wanted to start a YouTube, I figured it out. It, I did, had no knowledge to do it, but I wanted to bad enough that I did it. And I think that once you do that first one thing that you just, you want to do, it becomes so much easier to just hop right on because now that's the last thought in my mind when somebody says, hey, Dory, do you want to do that? I don't even think I don't know how to do that. I think I'll figure out how to do that. <laughs> I got this. I mean, I'm smooth. Yeah, so, I love that. That's what was I talk about that in my book. What Here, was your first you thing? Do something. What's the first step? Yes. Just take one step and then you'll get the next step. And if you don't know what the third step is, ask. Yes. Find someone that's done it, or Google it, or, you know, there's a lot of groups on Facebook that can help you out with whatever it is that you want to do. Yes. Just, just take 
the first step. <laughs> and you did, and look at you. Look yes. At story. Like, and it makes me happy. Like, that's what I will say, is that when you finally have the gumption to follow something in your life, to do anything that you want. My whole life, I always thought, I'm not good enough at that to do it. If I tried a sport and I didn't do it right the first time, or, you know, I, I tried to do a mind puzzle, or you name it, anything. I gave up on stinking everything in my life. Because if I couldn't be good, I'm not going to do that. That's just going to make me look stupid. I'm like, oh no, that's exactly it. If I wasn't good at it right away, I didn't want to do it anymore. Next. Right? But if it's something you're interested in, it's okay to suck. Yes. It's okay. Especially when you're on, if you have got that goal, like, okay, I'm not a great singer. Right. But I am learning to sing. So yeah, it's crappy right now, but it's going to be good. It just takes time and it's hard. It takes a lot of work and time, but once I get there, yay! You get to be there. Like, is there a better feeling in the world than being like, oh my god, I'm totally doing it. Hello, doing it. Right? Right? But you're not going to be, that's another thing. People will start on their goals. Yes. And then the going, going, okay, it's good, and they hit something, like you said, they don't know. Don't know how to do it. Or, oh, this is too hard. And then they just give up. Well, and it's easy to do that, right? Like, it's, we've all done that our whole lives. That's why it's so easy to do. It's comfortable. Your brain loves to keep you somewhere comfortable. And trying new things, if you are uncomfortable, you're doing a good thing. I can tell you that right now. If you are stepping out of your comfort zone and you think, oh, God, I don't know if I like this, you're doing it right. Like, that's step one to doing it right. If you never do things that you don't think you're good at or you don't think you'll be comfortable at, guess what? You'll never learn anything else that you've never done. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're um, in my book I call them the bubble people where they are so inside their comfort zone and they and they want to bring you in they try everything uh, for instance yes. when I said for instance when I was going to Peru they said oh, well, you don't speak the language what if you get sick isn't it expensive wow it's really far and well, <laughs> this is my life not yours so because you stayed in your bubble does not mean I have to stay in mine. And that's so hard, especially when it's your family and people that really um, are, I guess, sensitive to their opinion. It, like, it means a lot to you. And when they say something negative, you want to please them. Yes. But that's their life, not yours. Well, and it's okay. At it's what okay time? okay to do it. Everybody, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let people make your mind for you. Like, there comes a time. And I will say that when I first contemplated having weight loss surgery, my son was six months old. And my best friend at the time, we lived the same life. We were both 290 pounds. We were both miserable. We both were in bad relationships. And I wanted to have surgery. And she decided it wasn't healthy, it wasn't a good choice for me, how dare I? And I let her chew me out, and I listened. And then three years later, I wanted to, and she said no. And five years later, and three more years later, and eventually, I just did it behind her back, because I knew that there would never come a time when she would be willing to accept my decision. I made it, and I lost that friend, but I'm alive, I'm here, I'm healthy, I'm happy, and wow. she's still living our old life, and that's it. If you, misery loves company, right? Like, you yes. can live, you can live that forever, or you can pick a new life, and the people who want to come with you, guess what? They're going to come running out that door with you, and they'll be like, oh my god, dude, why didn't we do this sooner? And the people you leave behind, I promise you won't miss them. I promise. Like... It's like housekeeping yeah. the negativity at the same time. Because people who don't support you and consistently don't support you, they probably never will. So true. So true. Well put. Oh, I yes, love when you. I, uh, 
and I said I was going to write a book. They're like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, so what are we going to do for lunch? And they're like, you didn't even ask me what I was going to write about. And this is how it was. And then I wrote the book, and I said, hey, I wrote a book. And they were like, oh, oh my God, what's it about? Now you ask me. And now my friends are introducing me to their friends as, oh, this is Lisa. The author. My friend Lisa, the author. And I'm like, wait a minute. You didn't believe in me. You never thought this was going to happen. And now you're using me for clout. How did this happen? (laughs) See, now let's talk a little bit about that. Because people who are not necessarily on your side, as soon as you're successful, all of a sudden they're like, oh, look at this is my famous friend. (laughs) Yes. The bandwagon's here, everyone. (laughs) Gravy train! (laughs) Right? It's amazing. It's amazing. But I feel like now that I've done the thing they never expected, that they'll listen when I say, hey, I'm going to do public speaking again. And they'll go actually be interested because I'm really going to do it. Uh, The first time I did public speaking, I didn't even tell them. And when I did, they never asked me how it went. Oh. See, now that's heartbreaking, too, right? You're like, oh, I I feel that in my soul. I sweat through my clothes. I forgot what I was going to say. But they did not ask me how it went. So, yeah. But now I'm hoping, hope's a killer, but uh, I feel like they'll be a little more receptive. So... Let's talk about being your own best cheerleader. What happens when you're the only one who believes in you? Because you know what? When I start a lot of things, I'm like, I'm going to do this. And they're like, well, that's a good idea for you, Dory. Have fun with that. And at the end of the day, no one is going to believe in your dreams like you do. So let's talk a little bit about that. How do you go from believing you're not good enough at anything to having enough confidence to say, you know what, I'm just going to do it one time. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to do it. Well, I used to get really hurt when my friends and family didn't believe in me, when they didn't really care. Care really isn't the right word, but I guess they weren't really interested in what I was interested in. Then. Okay. And I did some research on it, actually. I was curious. I was like, why does... I'm not flaky. I'm not dumb. Why does nobody care that I'm doing this amazing thing? Hello, I'm changing the world. And it turns out, um, well, you can't expect everyone to, um, to support your dream. It's almost a little bit selfish. Like, well, I expect everyone to be as excited as I am about my dream. Right. Also, I'm a natural cheerleader, so I do cheer everyone on, but you can't expect it. And that's what the killer is. Yes. It's your expectation. Yes. If it's even even in the dating world, that's what kills a lot of people. If you have this expectation of all this, and then they're not going to reach it. And when it comes to being a cheerleader, you can't expect everyone to support your dream. So yes. you have to support your own dream. And finding like-minded people is a great a great way to do it. And that's how I did it, just even online with um, Facebook groups and Instagram. Also, you have people in your life that are very supportive of this, and you yes. don't even know it. Because yes. once you got shot down by <coughs> people, you stop telling everyone. And I found this late that I mentioned somebody, oh, yeah, I'm writing a book. And they were super excited, and they kept asking me about it. And I had stopped telling anyone. So don't give up on your people. They're there. They well, do support you. You just can't expect 100% of the people around you to be a cheerleader. In the beginning, you only have you, too. Like, I started all of my pages, all of my social media. It's only you. You have no one to share your content. In the beginning, you have no one to share your book except for you. And then a half a dozen people who are excited to help you share. And those people who see people who are excited to help you share. But the problem is, is if you're too afraid to tell anybody 
about what you're doing, how will anybody ever support you and help you if they don't even know you're doing it? Like, yeah. That's so true. I've got that even a bit now still where I wanted to, I did the same thing you did. Do I create a Facebook group? Do I not create a Facebook group? Do I create a page? What do I, do I, what, who do I invite to it? Oh, they're going to think it's stupid, you know, and I still struggle with that now, but I'm starting to go, you know what? It's not my responsibility to please everybody. And I can't expect everyone to be into or understand my point of view. And that's okay. Yes. I think I think as a natural cheerleader too, it's it's always important to remind yourself everyone isn't me. Everyone isn't me. So the level that I feel that I input into supporting someone or cheerleading for them or sharing their content, it's it's not a give and take. I can't give that expecting to get that same amount of dedication back from them because then my feelings are always going to be hurt and it takes away from the gift of supporting them that I was giving if I feel begrudged later that I didn't get like that same 90% back from them. Everyone will give and do what they do and we all support differently. Absolutely. That is so true. Again, with the expectations. You share someone's stuff, you can't expect them to give that back to you. They may repay you in a totally different way later. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I'm going to share Dory's post, and I hope she shares mine. But if it's not, that's another thing, especially in the Instagram world. Yes. If it's not their aesthetic. Like, I, like my other channel is, a, is food. Yeah. I'm not sharing my book stuff on my food channel because that doesn't make sense (laughs) and I would never expect any of my fellow foodies to post about my book because that doesn't make sense yeah so there's there's things like that or even uh, yeah there's things like that you don't think about I guess you're thinking more give and take and I think it depends on what you set up your page to be like if somebody goes over to my page it's a shamas of everything I think is cool like that's the bottom line if I think it's awesome it's on there if it's recipes if it's somebody's cool cookbooks I saw if it's a joke video that I made with my dog because I love humiliating my dog my son's all stop embarrassing my dog and I say she needs to earn her keep make me famous dog I'm not famous yet hello do your job yeah so for me it's just kind of bleh. but everybody accepts that from Dory because that's what they know my page is if they came to my page and they were expecting just recipes or just inspirational thoughts or just or just then I think they might be a little bit overwhelmed but everybody who knows me knows they get everything I think is cool <laughs> exactly and that's what your followers expect Yes. If you suddenly dropped it and were just posting inspirational quotes all the time, they wonder if you're okay. Or it would get not boring. Because like they come to your channel for that. Yes. Because they love your personality. They love the works. They love the random stuff you post. They love the keto stuff you post. So that's your audience. And that's perfect. What I found early on, too, was the more you share about who you really are, your interests, the things that you like, you're more likely to find people who have that in common with you and they have an interest. Like, for people who follow my page, I have a weird cross collection. Like, I won't lie. I have people who follow me just for my rainbow hair. I have people who follow me just because they love unicorns. I have people who follow me just for my cats, just for my recipes. I have this weird selection of fishermen who follow me. I don't know. I followed one of my... I followed someone in Vegas. I have a bunch of Vegas coffee shops that follow me, but I also go to Vegas regularly. So it's the odd odd posts I find that get me the most new friends the things that I think well maybe that's not related to what I'm doing but I think it's cool yeah well that's another thing 
is a hard part of also getting out of your comfort zone is being vulnerable. Yes. Letting yourself be vulnerable. And that's hard for people to do, is to show that side of them. That's where I have trouble with doing that with food. Yes. This I'm okay. But with food, it's really hard for me to, to do that because the food community is very weird. They but, are. Uh, and I try to skirt all of those communities. I won't lie to you because I make recipes for the carnivores and I make recipes for the vegans. And somehow I get away with it because I'm Dory in the middle. See? See, there you go. But, See, that's, that's one thing a lot of your followers probably admire is that you are unapologetically you. And they probably wish they would give themselves permission to do it. Do you know what? That's the message I get most often. Dory, you make me happy and it makes me think that I can do things too. Like, I just like to see you be you. And I won't lie, not everybody likes it. I have not been unscathed. I get my fair share in somebody else's of criticism. Because not everybody likes it when you do you. Do you know? Like, I've literally had people message my friends and say, Oh, God, if I have to see Dory dance one more time, well, then don't watch it. Like, if you don't want to watch somebody dance around their kitchen and have fun, dude, don't. Like, nobody's making you. Nobody's paying you. I have a magical scrolling finger. If I don't like it, I can just keep a moving. But yeah. anything you do... Not everyone is entitled to your opinion. Yes. You shouldn't always share it. And it's the internet. It's not like, well, Dory in your kitchen is the only thing I can watch right now. Right? I'm stuck. I can't watch anything else. I I hate this, but I'm stuck watching it. So I'm going to leave a comment, and I'm going to let you know how much I really didn't like watching this free content. Yeah. Funny place, the internet, but I still love it. It, it connects yeah, us in a way you know that what? you'll never hear from a hater doing better than you. Good point. Yeah. That is a very good point. People who feel the need to, you know, poo poo all over your happiness, they're usually going through something. Hurt people mm-hmm. hurt people. So there's generally yes. a reason why they're doing it. I mean, who goes out of their way to say something negative? I, my mom always taught me, if you don't have anything nice to say, say nothing. And I have been caught in that situation before where I was like, oh my God, they need my opinion on this. And then I was like, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. I'm just wasting my time and my energy because I'm not going to change anybody's mind. Like... Especially not by being nasty, you're never going to change anybody's mind. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, there's, like, TikTok is a great example. TikTok's a great time. Oh, I love it. The trolls are brutal. And you see these women on there who are dancing, they're doing their thing, they're having a great time. And if they are slightly overweight, people feel the need to remind them of that. Oh. So, what is their end goal here? What, what... What, is you, what do you think they're going to do because of your comment? And most of the time, you know, negative negative comments usually have nothing to do with you. Yeah. Chances are you may remind somebody of somebody that they don't like, which is not your fault. Right. Or something historical, something that happened, it just reminds them of something bad, and now they need to tell you about it. Or they feel bad about their own body and they need to shame somebody else. I mean, I, God, I don't even know how many people walked up to me when I was at my biggest and said things like that. And I'd be like, oh my God, I'm fat? No. 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 Oh my God, when did that happen? I wasn't fat yesterday. Thank you so much for letting me know. I was going to go through my whole day wearing this outfit and not even realizing it made me look fat. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. That's crazy. That's so crazy. Yeah, they need to project their feelings onto other people. And they probably have so much going on in their head and around them 
where if you have a lot of times, if you have a, a, a messy house or a messy car, yes. you have a messy brain. Yes. It's so distracting from you to get anything done. Yes. So that's one thing I still struggle with is just trying to keep it neat because it gets distracting and I can't focus on anything. And yes. Move towards my goal. Well, in every. I'm looking at, I'm looking at my laundry all over the place, or <laughs> books everywhere, bills everywhere, you know, recycling, garbage. Like ah, but I find that yeah, when you're messy, messy life, messy brain. So let's let's close out with how you kind of tackle that. What would be your first step because I feel like it's the same with cleaning your house if your whole house is a disaster and you're looking at the whole house and you're thinking oh god I don't even know where to start I'm not even gonna bother well we'll do this tomorrow my answer is pick the smallest room in your house and start with that one because then you feel like I've accomplished one clean room I can move on to the next so how would you equate that with living your dreams, writing your new bucket list, starting our brand new life that we're going to have because we're done living misery. Like we're going to have positive lives. We're going to have a good time. What would your first step for that be? Like cleaning your house. Even what I had to do when I was living in chaos, I picked one shelf. Okay. It was one, one shelf. I took everything off it. I cleaned it, threw a bunch of things away, put it back one shelf okay every single day i would do one thing just one thing one shelf one table that i would clean and as the days go on it gets it calms it calms your brain down to not have all of that chaos around you and it allows you to think clearly about the next step in your goal and oh. that coupled with just like love meditation all the healthy things, meditation, veggies, exercise, calms your mind down and helps you stay focused on your goal or even just tidying one room. Oh, I love it. it. So I'm going to scroll for comments. While I do that, why don't you let everybody know all of your social medias, where they can find you, your website for your book, all the deets. All right. Well, my website is thenewbucketlist.com, so you okay. can find my blog link and my podcast, as well as my book is available on Amazon. Okay. My podcast, The New Bucket List, is available on every platform ever, which is super cool. I've got some really interesting guests coming up. Yay! Instagram, Live The New Bucket List, and Twitter, New Bucket List underscore, because Yay. Twitter doesn't allow me to have a really long name. Oh, I love it. The only where I'm different too is TikTok because of the length of my name. That is what that is. And if anybody's curious, I did pop your links in the live on Facebook. So all they got to do is go right over there and click. I will load this up to YouTube, including all your links. And it's just a click, 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 and everybody can find you easy peasy. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dory. It's yes. just so fun. Yes, I totally want to do it again if you have time. And I'll, yeah. we got to get together and start helping you promote this book because I think it's going to be really awesome and I'm totally down to help. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Thank you so much. I love meeting a fellow cheerleader. Yes. Yay! Go team! <laughs> Go team! Go team! Awesome! <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. It was amazing to meet you, and I look forward to doing it again. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Thanks to all of your followers for watching. This yes. was a blast, and I hope you watch the next one. Don't yes. forget to check me out on social. For sure. Have a great night. Thanks so much, hon. You too. Bye, Dory. Bye. Okay, guys. So I'm losing light in my kitchen, <laughs> and it's starting to get dark in here. It was plenty bright when I started, so I didn't need any lights. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing evening. And spoiler alert, I still have my Valentine's recipe stuff set up. So stay tuned. Um, I need to eat some food, and it may as well be heart-shaped because it's Valentine's tomorrow. So stay tuned, and I'll probably pop up a recipe or two tonight. 
Have a great night, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Bye.